Greetings and welcome to the Future of International Education Leadership Perspectives from Around the World, focusing on Latin America. Everybody is currently on listen-only mode, but we do encourage you to type in questions throughout the presentation and they will be uh, given to the panelists during the Q&A section. Without further ado, I'll hand it over to Gary May, Chancellor of the University of California, Davis. Thank you, Claire. Uh, good morning, or perhaps I should say good afternoon or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Thank you for joining us today uh, for the fifth and final panel of the online series, The Future of International Education, Leadership Perspectives from Around the World. I'll spend about a half an hour asking our panelists questions, then we'll have some time for questions from our audience. Over the past few weeks, we brought together university leaders for critical global and regional discussions on the consequences of COVID-19. We've examined what they mean for global engagement and the future of international education and higher education in 2020 and beyond. This series is hosted by the Institute of International Education, UC Davis Global Affairs, and the UC Davis Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Today's event will focus on on Latin America, uh, Latin American regional context, and I am pleased to be joined by three distinguished leaders from Latin American universities. I'm also pleased to say UC Davis is committed to strong collaborations with Latin American institutions and partners, including with my colleagues here today. Among many initiatives, we have several research and faculty connections, particularly through our UC Davis Chile Life Sciences Innovation Center in Santiago. We also host many prestigious fellows from Latin America, most notably through the Fulbright Program and the Hubert H. Humphrey Fellows Program. We'll be expanding on this through our Global Centers Initiative, which is developing a regional hub to connect us with Latin America and the Caribbean region. I will be brief in my introduction so we can get right to our speakers. Today, Latin America faces a number of challenges, many similar to other regions of the world, including the United States. The COVID-19 pandemic has led to widening economic crisis, political instability, and rising social inequality. Like other regions around the world, COVID-19 is having dramatic consequences for higher education. UNESCO estimates that more than 28 million university students across Latin America and the Caribbean are now learning remotely. Yet during this difficult current moment, universities in Latin America are also showing leadership in developing global learning opportunities. They are also providing critical research across disciplines to address the pandemic. We believe that higher education can lead the way. Rector Sanchez and, and President Garza, who I'll introduce shortly, and 31 other global university leaders signed a manifesto for mobility in higher education to be a catalyst for resilience and, a, and the renewal in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic and global tensions. I look forward to hearing more about these and other efforts from our panelists. Now it's my pleasure to welcome three distinguished leaders to the panel today. They will share their unique insights on how their universities are navigating the challenges and the emerging opportunities in the wake of COVID-19. They will also discuss other important dynamics in Latin America in their countries and within their institutions. Due to, the, due to our time constraints, I will not be able to summarize the many accomplishments of our panelists. So I encourage you to look at their impressive biographies, which are available on the event webpage. I thank our panelists for joining us. They are Ignacio Sanchez Diaz, Rector uh, Pontificia uh, Universidad uh, Católica de Chile, David Garza, President Tecnologico de Monterrey, and Soraya Smiley, Rector, Universidad Federal de uh, Sao, Sao Paulo. Uh, I welcome you all and appreciate you taking the time to join us for this important conversation. Uh, we'll start with question one and Rector Sanchez. Question is, what is the role and responsibility of universities and institutions of higher learning and specifically international education in times of global crisis and post-crisis. Uh, Rector Sanchez. Thank you, uh, Chancellor May. It is a pleasure to participate in this uh, important uh, seminar about uh, the future of uh, international education. Uh, our university and uh, UC Davis uh, has a, a long 
long-term collaboration uh, um, work, and uh, this is uh, one extra task that uh, we accomplish uh, together. Uh, answering the question, I guess the role of uh, the universities, uh, I would say at least uh, we have three main aspects. The first one is to understand the crisis. The second one is to show commitment with the persons, the people, the, the, the citizens. And the third one is to present the answers to society. In the first one, we have to be empathic. We have to understand what is uh, happening to the people that uh, suffer uh, the sanitary crisis, the people that suffer the economical uh, uh, aspect of the crisis with unemployment, with uh, fear, with uh, tensions in the inside the work, inside the houses. It's a big, big uh, problem with the mental health. Uh, there is a big problem with uh, the sanitary crisis that uh, uh, hit uh, much more to the group of uh, the, the poor and the one that uh, needs uh, more uh, help from the government. So uh, to present uh, as um, institutions that are empathic and knows what is happening, I guess is uh, crucial. Second, uh, to show commitment. And that means uh, to be worried about uh, our own community, about uh, our the students, the professors, the staff that are working and studying uh, the, the, the semester, but also are having uh, problems at home, are having the, the problems that all the citizens do have. So uh, the commitment of the uh, university uh, with society, I guess, is uh, under, under evaluation now, because uh, it is crucial that uh, our universities present uh, a response to, to to the crisis. And the third one is uh, to present answers. And uh, research is uh, crucial in this moment. And uh, when I'm saying research, I'm, uh, I'm um, taking um, into account different areas, like a uh, social area, the educational area, and also the technological and health area. In the social part, I guess, um, at least in, in our country, we have been um worry about the mental health as i said before about the, the critical um, ethical um, uh, lines to approach the pandemia and also about the um, documents regarding to education both at school and also in the higher education in the in the way of how to tackle all the 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 um, uh, future in this sense. Um, lastly, uh, I will say that um, the university has a key role in regards to health and uh, technological advances to present answers to this um, crisis. Uh, I'm, I'm taking into account the, the diagnosis uh, area of the crisis and also the answers in treatment under the ambulatory and uh, hospitalized uh, part of the crisis. And uh, for sure, the vaccine that uh, will be uh, the final answer to this uh, pandemia. In uh, our university, we are just about to start um, a trial with a new vaccine. And uh, we are having um, a real commitment with the new development in uh, immunization and vaccines for the future. So. All those three areas, I guess, are the main answers that the universities do have uh, under the present uh, crisis. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rector Sanchez. Well said. Understanding, commitment, and finding solutions. I, I agree. Uh, President uh, Garza, what are your thoughts? Yes, uh, thank you, Chancellor May, for kindly hosting us today. I'm really honored to be part of this. A timely conversation with my co colleagues from uh, Chile and Brazil. Um, let me mention uh, four of our roles and responsibilities that uh, we think are critical today at the different levels of scope. Uh, first and foremost, it, it is essential. To, uh, it, it is an essential calling for the universities to contribute to a sense of direction, purpose, and hope. 
And uh, something very important that I would add is that uh, the level of trust that we nurture among our students, our faculty and the stakeholders is also key in these times. Secondly, uh, our immediate responsibility has to do with facing the health crisis internally and externally uh, through our university's health system uh, and through different uh, services that we provide to the community. We have implemented over 200 initiatives, multi-sectoral cooperation, research, development projects. Um, thirdly, uh, we obviously have a key academic responsibility, academic continuity with all the complexity that that brings. In our case, a not-for-profit university system, 26 campuses, and uh, of course, now looking at how uh, the next phase, returning to campus activities will be far more complex than the process that uh, we went through uh, during the lockdown. And uh, fourth, in the midst of, uh, of the crisis, we need to keep an eye on the future. We have to be more entrepreneurial than ever and contribute to build a new normal. Now, regarding internationalization, uh, for us, has always been a key strategy. Uh, I mean, 60% uh, of our students graduate with an international experience, and we emphasize an academic experience that develops a global mindset. I mean, we represent less than 2% uh, than, uh, of higher education in Mexico. However, we contribute to about 30, 20, between 20 and 30% of the international mobility that Mexico uh, uh, has in terms of inbound and outbound students and like many other, other universities we we had to deal with uh, during this crisis with with our students being abroad some of them coming back some of them uh, staying and we provide different alternatives to them and, uh, and also we 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 have to manage uh, a, the, the international students that work in mexico uh, how they finish their programs nearly 1000 of them managed to finish their programs so we are concerned with the huge challenge that the crisis the crisis are currently imposing the flows will fall short of the encouraging trends that we were observing before the pandemic but as we confront this situation we need to remember uh, that internationalization goes far beyond student mobility. It has to do with research, with outreach, with talent development, with enhancing our vision as institutions. We believe international links and partnerships will be complicated, but even more relevant now than ever. We need to reimagine student exchange, sharing experiences, best practices, and creating synergies will be crucial. Developing narratives that foster cooperation will, will be vital. Forums like this will be extremely helpful. Thank you. Thank you, President Garza. I appreciate those comments and I appreciate the forward-looking nature of your perspective. Um, Rector Smiley, could you share your thoughts on the, the first question? I'm not sure. Uh, oh, Rector Smiley, I think you're still muted. Are you there? Um, Chancellor May, I think we she may have uh, gone out and come back in, so perhaps you could move on to the next question. Okay, we'll come back uh, perhaps to her for the first question. Question number two uh, for our panel. How is your university pursuing internationalization in the current and emerging global environment? And what are the key challenges and opportunities that you are facing uh, at, at the moment? Uh, Ignacio? Thank you, Gary. Um, I guess uh, this is a very important question for us because uh, I have to tell you that um, we just uh, started with a new vice presidency in uh, international affairs. So we are very proud and happy that uh, Professor Lilian uh, Ferrer from the uh, medical uh, faculty, the School of uh, Nursing, uh, has taken the um, challenge to lead our new vice presidency. And, and this is very important because uh, you give uh, a sense of uh, priority and importance uh, in your own institution and also in the whole country. This is the first uh, um, vice president for in international affairs in Chile. Uh, usually, uh, the universities uh, do have this under uh, direction 
um, below um, a vice presidency or a, or a provost uh, office. And uh, one of the main challenges that the, uh, Professor Ferrer does have is um, to do a, a real coordination between teaching and research uh, uh, affairs in regards to internationalization uh, with the student exchange, professor exchange, with the increasing uh, collaborative uh, work uh, in research areas. Uh, also, uh, to strengthen the relationship with the key uh, partners like uh, UC Davis, uh, like uh, also Tech of uh, Monterrey, uh, like uh, uh, important uh, universities in uh, Latin America, Europe, uh, North America, Asia, um, Australia. Um, we have to define the key uh, partners uh, to focus uh, our exchange and to focus our uh, collaborative uh, work. Also, uh, important networks that uh, we have um, between uh, universities uh, will be um, improve uh, the relationship. And uh, under the pandemic, all these issues, uh, I guess, uh, take uh, more and more importance. One of the main uh, factors that uh, decided to uh, take this uh, step is to, to do what we call the internalization in-house, uh, so uh, to improve uh, the English uh, language in, uh, in our university, to have uh, more English uh, classes uh, for the students. Uh, they can choose uh, both in undergrads and uh, postgraduate education to have a real exchange between staff, uh, students, and, um, and professors. Uh, to improve um, the uh, visibility of uh, what is happening in, in the world in different uh, areas. And um, I will uh, summarize saying that the coordination of uh, all the internationalization uh, actions in a university is a key issue. And also, uh, under the more high level of an institution, to have the voice and the view of uh, international uh, uh, news of what is happening in higher education, I guess, is, uh, is a key role of this uh, new vice presidency. All that, I guess, uh, put us uh, on a very, um, very important uh, aspect of uh, the university uh, challenges and actions of the Catholic University for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Many challenges uh, ahead for your new Vice President for International Affairs. Uh, David, uh, what do you think? Yes, uh, you know, uh, since there, there is still great, great uncertainty about the evolution of the pandemic, and uh, of course, as many universities, we will start our activities next semester uh, in, a, uh, in a hybrid format, perhaps starting in a row and then moving more to a hybrid. And, uh, but uh, we, anyhow, we, we are still looking at how to provide some international opportunities for our students and from, for students from other, uh, from other countries. Uh, and of course, we think that perhaps we'll be um, even better prepared for the spring of next year, but anyhow, we want to do something starting this, uh, uh, this fall. Uh, at Tech, we started developing a, a new program uh, about uh, two years ago called Global Classroom, uh, where we uh, we merged two similar and, and or complementary subjects into one uh, one session, one di in digital format, and this allows us to gather international faculty and uh, mix students from different countries. Uh, in, in the past year, we have about 1,000 students participating from different pl places around the world, of course, including uh, our students as well. And this joint digital experience will be an important part of our new portfolio. Uh, it, it includes a joint design and development uh, of, of, of the topics. Uh, so, and it also allows to highlight cultural elements and realities of the countries involved uh, in this type of experiences. Also, through some of, our, of the networks that we belong to, like for example, uh, with U21, uh, there is this project that actually UC Davis is leading for the Global Classroom and the UN Sustainable Development Goals. 
uh, where we are going to be participating in this type of, uh, of uh, design of the course and experience. And with APRU, uh, also there is this program that is that is taking shape about virtual student exchange program. That is not just the idea of taking a remote class from another country, but there are these elements of uh, trying to get to know about the co other culture and even try to socialize with uh, people, with students, from uh, to have those other more informal spaces. So on top of that, other important aspect uh, that we, we are considering, it has to do with alliances. Uh, we currently have alliances with many universities, like in the US, and we have an alliance in Latin America, in La Triada, with uh, 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 Colica de Chile and uh, with Universidad de los Andes, uh, where we currently operate over 50 joint research projects. But we are also looking to explore new alliances uh, to, uh, to in, within the regional context. Like, for example, we consider that uh, uh, the California, Texas, Arizona, Mexico, that uh, could be an interesting alliance of universities trying to focus on creating a consortium on border state universities uh, where we can uh, focus on some common interests and of special relevance for both countries. So uh, those are the things that uh, Thank you so much. It, it's clear to me that, that networks and alliances such as U21 and others will be very important as we go forward. So I appreciate you mentioning that. I think we now have uh, Rector Smiley back uh, on the uh, panel. Uh, I, I would like to ask her if she could address both of the first two questions. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. I think you can hear me now, right? Yes. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Chancellor May, for this kind invitation. It's a great pleasure for me being with you. Uh, I'm sorry for the little technical problems here, but I think that uh, we are now all right. And I will try to address uh, rapidly the first and, the, and then the, the second question. Uh, the first point on, my, uh, on the first question is to say that public universities in Brazil as UNIFESP, the Federal University of Sao Paulo, we carry and uh, carry out teaching, research, and social projects. So we do a lot of things, not, not only teaching or only research. Uh, in, a, in a time of crisis like the one that we are experiencing now, uh, due to the coronavirus uh, and uh, uh, the pandemic, the university must reaffirm its mission and be challenged to do even more, to do what we other institutions cannot do. Uh, that's the point that I wanted to make, is our mission, the mission of our universities. The emergency situation uh, was installed in the world, and uh, our university, Federal University of Sao Paulo, reorganized several actions to combat the coronavirus and the COVID-19. There were many actions performed in the last four months in Brazil and in our university, and I can highlight some of them. Uh, the first uh, is the virtual activities and the actions that we were uh, doing. Uh, this was accelerated, and we now uh, have a quick response to the needs of our society. Also, our students that uh, didn't have uh, computer access or uh, uh, access to the digital uh, uh, platforms, now we are having uh, all the students, uh, the inclusion, social inclusion of all the students. We have to also say that we are very involved and engaged in the research projects. Uh, uh, in four months, we now have 150 projects going on in our university, only in coronavirus, in the main topic of coronavirus. And we are now developing the vaccine together with the University of Oxford. We just started the phase three uh, studies in Sao Paulo, and we are now performing also the Brazilian vaccine. We have developed project, social projects, several in assistance to our uh, communities. And we also have our hospital, 
which is in the f largest city in La Latin America, Sao Paulo. And we are doing uh, uh, all the assistance to the population, uh, to the society by our public health system. Related to the second uh, question, I would like to say that Federal uh, University of Sao Paulo is uh, very known in a Latin America for uh, doing research, especially in medical and biomedical science. We have also developed the areas of humanities and edu education and engineering. But uh, our main point in this uh, situation of the emergency, uh, sanitary emergency in the world, our researchers have uh, develop more collaborations, more interactions with universities around the world. And now we are doing uh, several uh, uh, collaborations uh, uh, to, treat, to treat uh the, the COVID-19, the coalitions uh, searching for the new drugs to treat the, the disease, and also the research with the vaccines, as I said before. We are now also developing several activities related to the object, uh, to the sustainable objectives of development, uh, the SODs, and our university is really involved in uh, in reducing uh, inequalities, gen uh, looking for gender equality. We are among the first universities in the world uh, in those topics, in those SODs. And also, uh, we want to stress that it's very important to be uh, uh, cooperative. Uh, uh, we have to cooperate more than compete. We have to uh, continue our collaborations with uh, Latin American universities, with uh, European United States universities all over the world. We need uh, to continue cooperation, continue collaboration more than uh, competition, because we need to uh, look forward to to uh, pass this situation, to cross over this situation. So this is what I wanted to say about this two first question. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rector Smiley. It's certainly, uh, cooperation and collaboration will be critical as we go forward. I'm very impressed by the 150 COVID-related projects at your university. And I think I can speak for us all when we say we are hopeful uh, that the vaccine studies are successful. Uh, I think we are starting to get questions from the audience. So I will, I will take uh, the first question we received from the audience, and this is for all panelists. And the question is, given the dependence on online and hybrid models of teaching and learning, how are your institutions addressing access to technology? And are you taking any measures to train faculty on these delivery methods? Uh, we will start again with uh, Rector Sanchez. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chancellor. I will say that uh, in our case, uh, the university, uh, through um, a teaching uh, department for, for professors, uh, has been uh, taking the responsibility of uh, training and uh, doing uh, um, um, and a company and a, and, a, and teaching to our professors in order to um, build uh, capacities in uh, let's say Canvas, Zoom, uh, different uh, platforms. Um, we did that uh, last year. Uh, we were preparing ourselves to to enhance this uh, online uh, teaching, and also uh, we. Um, we invited uh, the, the the representative of uh, the student uh, councils uh, under the academic area to present our proposal. So the students knew um, about uh, what was the idea to learn and what was the idea to go for. Uh, that was uh, very important uh, when uh, we decided to change our teaching and uh, activities from the presential um, way to the distant uh, and online way. Uh, as uh, Professor Garza was saying, uh, also uh, with the international um, uh, contact with Tech of Monterrey, Universidad de Los Andes, we 
we have been uh, building also capacities in the, in the Coursera um, platform for uh, continuous education as well. Second, and I uh, completely agree with uh, Professor Smiley, uh, we were preoccupied and we were worried about uh, the number of students that uh, didn't have uh, the access to computer, the access to internet uh, connection. So um, both uh, ways, uh, training and also to build the uh, access capabilities were in the middle of our attention. Uh, we have more than 2,000 students over the 26,000 that we have in the undergrad uh, area of the university that needed um, help in regards to internet connection or devices or also a small number but also important one to say um, satellite uh, connection to get uh, access to um, internet. So all these uh, details uh, we have been uh, uh, worry about and um, I guess in that uh, in, in times of uh, pandemia is the time where even one case is very important for the community because uh, we have to build the um, opportunities and uh, equality in order to be inclusive and in order to um, break uh, uh, or to to build bridges uh, for every student and every professor to keep going with the task that we have been uh, taking at the universities. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that answer. And it sounds like you are, are supporting your students and faculty. Uh, uh, President Garza, what are your thoughts? Yes, uh, uh, well, let me, let me start by saying uh, that uh, many times we, we listen that uh, universities we move too slow, we are change averse and things like that. Uh, but oh, oh boy, I mean, I think that during this crisis, uh, we have shown that we can move fast, that we can be flexible, and that we can be creative and innovative. And, um, and related to the training of the faculty, I mean, even even uh, even though we had some capabilities related to distance learning, uh, I would say that perhaps about 20, 25 percent of our of our faculty uh, were trained for uh, completely distance learning. So we still have a. a uh, a, a big part of our faculty that had to be uh, trained in that as, in that aspect. So we, uh, in the, at the beginning of the crisis, we managed a one one week full immersion, and throughout the the uh, semester, support from the faculty that already knew about distance learning. They were helping their peers. I mean that that helped a lot. I mean the creation of communities of, of peers that help each other with tips, with ideas, and things like that. Now. More, uh, looking towards the fall semester and actually during the summer, I mean, the experience that we had during this spring semester is an emergency remote teaching. And we, what we, are, we said was we need to, to change from emergency remote teaching towards a distance learning model with new, with different uh, technologies and pedagogies, especially pedagogies associated with, with the needs. So, Faculty has been already uh, has already uh, also under training in, during this period to try to improve uh, and uh, and uh, be better in terms of uh, not just the technologies but as I mentioned the different pedagogies synchronous asynchronous and different uh, evaluation methods and things like that related to technologies uh, and the, the access to technology uh, we we managed uh, well there was an advantage that we had and that's that. Uh, it was a requirement for our students to have access to a computer even before the crisis. Even though, I mean, uh, and in this situation, you have low-income students that had to go back to their homes, and the situation was different there. So we, we implemented loans of equipment uh, that own equipment that the university had. We even have internal campaigns for uh, donations for people that can contribute to help uh, these stu uh, students, and we also created an emergency fund to help students in need, not just for the technical aspects, for in, but in general, there were many families that uh, were having, a, uh, they were struggling in terms of financial aspects. So those are the, the main actions that, uh, that we have implemented. So I just finalized mentioning that um, definitely the, we have the challenge to evolve from emergency remote teaching towards a more uh, comprehensive and uh, uh, more structured uh, distance learning models with different elements. 
Thank you. I think that was an important point. It's not just technology and equipment that's needed. Funding is also important often for our underserved populations. Uh, Rector Smiley, how about uh, your university in Brazil? Uh, yes, I think that I, I wanted to also point out about the uh, access, about the uh, internet access and the program that we developed here uh, to include the, the, the students. So 15% uh, of our students didn't have access or computers. This means that uh, we had uh, about uh, 2,000 uh, students without access. And now we, are, we have developed a big program with donations and also with uh, funds to allow the computers and the, the access, uh, the internet access, so that we can continue our uh, contact with the students. Right now we are, uh, we have in progress, exactly this week, we are having a Congress uh, with the academic Congress that we do every year. Uh, we are doing right now uh, virtually so we are doing digital Congress with all the students we have more than uh, 30,000 people uh, uh, registered and uh, about 40 percent of the 30,000 people are people that are not from the university so they are uh, from the society the population is uh, also very interested in what we are doing this is very good because we are we have the, the possibility to allow people to know what we are doing. Another thing in the program that we are doing is, is uh, to assist our students, especially the medical students and the residents that are in the, in the hospital. Uh, those people, they really need uh, these students and residents, they need support all the time, not only for their health, but also for the mental health. We have developed this program as well, and we, we feel that this is very necessary. And uh, third, I'd like to point uh, as well, the, the, the what is very important for the students and the residents, and also the professors and all faculties in our university, is that we are now very engaged uh, with the uh, donation programs. We created funds uh, to support the research and to support the students uh, uh, for their needs. And also the social projects that, we, that I told you before. So these are main uh, programs, but uh, uh, there are several challenges. We are uh, re reprogramming several activities and I think that we have a lot of work to do in the next uh, uh, few months. Thank you. I think it's uh, really interesting to make the point on your, your your virtual conference. You have to include people outside the university as well in the explorations. Uh, very interesting point. Um, the, the next question is for Rector Sanchez. Uh, since October 2019, uh, an important social uprising has been happening in Chile. Do you think that the combination of the pandemic with the social uprising is opening new possibilities for democratizing the Chilean educational system? Is there anything we can learn here in the U.S. from your experience? Well, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, it's uh, very clear that uh, October 18 in uh, Chile uh, presented a, a very profound and deep uh, social crisis in, in regards to equality, in regards to more opportunities to uh, everyone. And also uh, has been a, an opportunity to reflect, uh, to do a reflection of uh, what is the society that uh, we, we have been uh, building in regards to um, social uh, rights in regards to health, education, um, uh, ways of uh, living, and more profoundly in regards to what kind of uh, respect do we have uh, to each other? What is the dignity of the person? What is the real value 
that we have uh, of life. All that has been uh, also uh, being analyzed under the, uh, the, the the actual crisis, the, the health uh, crisis. So um, the question will be: What is the uh, what is the reflect the final reflection that we we are going to have? taking into account the two crises, the sanitary one and also the social one that we face uh, at the end of the year. Uh, this for sure, as any crisis, is an opportunity to learn and to grow. Now, I'm pretty sure that we have a, we have a, a big uh, challenges in the future uh, because uh, everything has been uh, I mean, it has to be done in a community level. Everything has to be done with a, a common well a value, uh, a, a goal of uh, uh, of have um, common uh, goods to society and not to a certain part of the society. So, so the sense of community, the respect of uh, the dialogue. Uh, to understand what is uh, needing uh, everyone in the society is a challenge that we have to accomplish uh, as a group. Uh, we need politicians, we need universities, we need um, majors uh, uh, that uh, conduct uh, communities. We need to learn uh, uh, what is the um, scientific society's thinking, what are the people thinking about this, from our university, we conduct a program that is called, we have to talk about Chile. It is good to talk about Chile. Um, that's the translation of the program. And um, the idea is to put um, thousands of uh, Chilean people, more than 17,000, one every 1,000 inhabitants, to discuss uh, in a virtual way uh, to each other in a group of five, six, seven persons with a moderator. And the questions, uh, Gary, are what do you think about Chile? What are your dreams? What are your needs? What hurts you uh, about the society that uh, we have built? So everything um, that uh, we are doing is uh, promoted by both social and sanitary crisis. And I guess the challenge is to have um, good summary and to have a good uh, will about uh, we are living uh, doing this uh, almost a year now from october to the to the current uh, date well thank you ignacio for that uh, very thoughtful uh, answer um the next question is is for anyone but maybe especially for rector smiley and the question is there anything that was learned uh, from the zika virus response that has been helpful in addressing COVID-19? Yeah, okay, that's a great question because, uh, thank you, because um, uh, of course uh, our uh, science, the Brazilian science, ha have uh, has a lot of uh, uh, things to say, so, we have developed uh, many, in many, many years, in decades, our universities are doing a lot of uh, research and science. And of course, the lessons from uh, Zika virus uh, are also uh, helping us. Uh, the example that I have to give you is that the laboratory that identified the virus, the coronavirus in Brazil, uh, back in uh, in February, beginning of March uh, this year, uh, is actually a laboratory that is uh, working on Zika virus and other viruses as well. So uh, those uh, knowledge were very important to uh, to us and to learn more about the coronavirus. So what we we knew uh, uh, on the coronavirus in March. Uh, it was much less than what we know now. Uh, thankfully for 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 the science and for the scientists that are doing this research, and I believe that with the knowledge that we have, 
uh, we will do uh, uh, advan uh, advances very soon. It's very important to point out as well that uh, with the problem of the Zika virus, because of the, the Brazilian science is uh, well developed, that we could learn in less than one year all the cycle of the virus, of the Zika virus. So this, is, uh, this shows how important it is to have a scientific uh, system working, to have funds, to have support from the government and to have the population helping us to do uh, more in a short time. This is very important to point because uh, science cannot suffer uh, with the instabilities, let's say like that. So we cannot suffer like uh, having uh, uh, support one day and not having another day. We need to have a stability to produce and to learn and also to have knowledge, to produce the knowledge to the society. Yes, thank you. That's a very important point uh, with Zika or, or COVID or any other virus. The support of the universities is now so crucial in, in, in research and in turning therapies and and vaccines. I, I really appreciate that comment. Uh, the next question is for all the panelists, anyone who would like to answer. Um, it, it's the U.S. has been called by some a pariah state right now. Uh, what is your outlook in continuing to send and receive students from the U.S. and continue academic collaboration with the U.S.? Yeah. Um. This is David Darsan, so perhaps let me let me share my my opinions here. Uh, you know, I, I think that something that we have seen is that uh, perhaps uh, the the interest of students to go into the uh, to to have to have exchange programs in the U.S. is definitely affected when uh, when there are some uh, messages or some signs or some policies uh, that. Uh, somehow the uh, the way that are interpreted are that well perhaps for me to have an, uh, an experience as a foreigner uh will be better off to try to look in uh, not in this united states but rather in another country so we have seen a, a, a decrease in in interest in some of our students uh regarding to to go into exchange programs in the u.s However, what we are seeing uh, is, and we are very like, uh, and we like this a lot, as that we have seen an increase in terms of uh, universities from the U.S. to try to work more in uh, uh, with us, and I suppose that with many other universities from Mexico, from from around the world, to promote more internationalization. I think that that. To me, and for me, that's the key aspect. And uh, somehow, uh, this uh, this sends a strong message. Uh, I, I have mentioned this uh, in another forum that uh, there is no wall that uh, can stop the universities uh, to collaborate. So we'll we'll always find ways to collaborate, and uh, we we value a lot of the international collaboration. So I think that uh, in that sense, the way that we we universities see it is that there is a will and there are, there is a need for that collaboration and as I mentioned we are even thinking about having and starting a new uh, a collaboration related to uh, cross-border uh, universities uh, in our case. Thank you David. Uh, Ignacio Soraya any other thoughts? Uh, yeah um, I guess uh, I agree with uh, David um we we are in a middle of a cycle uh, in regards to political and sanitary issues um, in the states um for us uh, in chile um, the exchange with the uh, universities in the united states is crucial it's a key issue we have uh, profound uh, links with different uh, universities uh, in the country uc davis is one of the more leading um, uh, links in academic for us in uh, several areas in uh, veterinary medicine in um, engineering also in history in law in agriculture for sure so um and also with the uh, uh, university of california system as well berkeley uh, for instance and uh, several more 
So um, I guess uh, we have to look uh, the future with uh, optimism. Uh, we have to know that uh, there are challenges in the current uh, time that we have uh, to overcome, but uh, no one in, uh, in our university or in uh, Chile uh, has put in a doubt on, uh, on the relationship with, uh, with the universities in the States, uh, because um, I guess history is uh, very important to, to look for, and um, the number of um, professors of uh, our universities that has been trained and has been uh, starting their own uh, research in the States is, uh, is very significant. And, and um, we have to value the personal uh, ties, the personal links, uh, the personal relationship to different uh, prestigious uh, institutions in the States. So Gary, I guess uh, we are in the middle of a, of a, a new, Era of uh, collaboration, and uh, I guess uh, the president of the uh, universities, chancellors, vice presidents, uh, we do have a big responsibility of uh, of uh, work and, uh, and um, promote this uh, collaboration in the near future. I agree. I think university presidents must continue to show this leadership, uh, whether or not it's shown uh, for from other aspects of our uh, society. Uh, Rector Smiley, any thoughts on this question from you? Oh yes, uh, so I I also agree that uh, uh, we we have uh, several answers uh, to give to the society, and the society have confidence in science and also in our universities. Uh, we are seeing now you know, with this pan pandemic emergency, that uh, all governments are asking for results and solutions. Uh, and the population also wants the solution, but they know that we are working on that. But we need to stress, and it's very important to say, that the governments need to support our uh, universities in the case of our university that is a federal university uh, the government in Brazil are asking for solutions but we need also to have the support for uh, this research that we are doing to have more uh, results to have the solutions for this uh, crisis that we are living and this is very necessary to point uh, to point out. We also will need, our universities will also need to work on the post-pandemic crisis but because we will have a, a crisis that will continue. Even though we have the vaccines and the treatments, we will have a big economic uh, challenge in, around the world and we need to give answers. And the, our universities are working on that too. And I am sure that we will give solutions for the problems, uh, the inclusions, the vulnerabilities, the health, the public health, and all of this, for all of this, we need the support of the Brazilian government. Right now we need uh, to, and we are showing that our universities are doing a lot, but we need to continue and we need to do for the society. Thank you. Very forward-looking uh, perspective. Uh, I'll ask maybe one more uh, audience question, then I'll ask the panelists to think about uh, your concluding remarks as we get closer to the end of the hour. And, and this question is for uh, President Garza. Uh, David, the global classroom model is really uh, a leading model in the world for collaborative online international learning. Uh, what have been the biggest benefits of this model for your faculty and students there? Yeah, for, uh, for our faculty, definitely the, the, uh, uh, since the, uh, the process of designing the course to, to interact with an, another colleague, uh, not just from another country, but also from different perspectives about the subject that they will be teaching uh, has been very enriching because even uh, uh, the, the, some of the faculty have mentioned, I 
I myself as a faculty learn a lot and not just from the, the peer person but also uh, the, for that opportunity to have in your in your uh, class students from different places around the world different perspectives uh, as you know there are cultural aspects in the way that students behave and things like that so though i would say that that's one of the of the key benefits for for our faculty and uh, for the students i mean the fact that they uh, they feel that they somehow all, uh, build some uh, relations with uh, the students from other places. I, I've heard that some of them are planning, uh, were planning actually uh, to visit them uh, during the spring breaks and things like that. So those are the things that uh, the added values. I mean, the, the opportunity to 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 build those those uh, relationships that somehow when those crystallize, uh, you have a broader understanding, uh, a different perspective. Uh, to, to interact with another culture. So I would say I would say that those are some of the of the aspects that, that we have seen. Thank you very much. Uh, there's only five minutes left in the hour. I wanted to give each panelist a chance to make some concluding remarks and then I will do the same. Uh, I'll start with uh, Rector Sanchez. Thank you, Gary. I guess uh, this pandemic uh, is uh, challenging us uh, in several aspects. Uh, one is uh, the future of uh, um, university education, what is going to be the role of uh, online teaching. For sure, we have to find a, a role for the, for the um, online um, uh, education. Uh, and to combine this uh, with a presential one, with a discussion of uh, small groups, uh, of uh, in order to take uh, the best of uh, each uh, student and each professor to present it to the community. Second, um, this pandemia is putting us uh, as a universities in a, a, a call of uh, more and more collaborative uh, research. Um, I guess uh, we have to understand that uh, no one is uh, uh, alone can give uh, answers. Uh, we need each other uh, in a personal uh, level and also in the institutional level. So uh, I guess um, discussions like this put us uh, on the on the platform of uh, collaborative uh, research and collaborative uh, discussion. And third, uh, this pandemia has been uh, putting uh, as uh, present. Garza and uh, Rector Soraya has been uh, saying um, that the universities uh, are on the center of uh, public commitment and uh, on the center of the public role in this uh, time of uh, pandemia because uh, the citizens uh, are asking to the universities uh, some answers and asking the universities some uh, uh, comprehensive uh, approach and I guess, uh, as uh, David was saying, it has been uh, very, very impressive how the universities uh, have been uh, answering and response. Uh, the response of the universities has been uh, really great uh, in these uh, uh, difficult times. But um, I guess the challenge is to keep going with this and uh, to uh, implement all these uh, new ways of uh, collaboration in the near future. Thank you so much, uh, President Garza. Yes, uh, well, definitely, we need we live in a region with lots of challenges of uh, poverty, low productivity. Uh, now it's predicted that about 50 million people will enter into poverty uh, due to the to the pandemic. And uh, universities, we uh, we are going to play a key role. There is um, after the health crisis, there is economic crisis, and as it was mentioned, there are also also social political aspects. So more than ever, we need to uh, play a key role. And universities uh, play a relevant role in the international context, and we must prevent that the current lockdown from separating us from our responsibility to educate the future global citizens from different backgrounds, different regions, different cultures. More than ever, we must focus on maintaining international education as part of our responsibility as global educators. And uh, we need to work jointly on the development of and ways to maintain a worthy and rich engagement. Thank you. Thank you so much. And finally, uh, Rector Smiley. Oh, yes. Thank you. So I think that we are. We have. I would like to say that we have a few lessons, but uh, some of them I will point here. 
one of them is the challenge that uh, is uh, to continue doing the action. So you, our universities will continue. We are doing a lot of work, but we need to keep uh, the atmosphere, the atmosphere that uh, the university have has to continue the research, the social projects, and to do all the support to our society. Uh, this doesn't mean that we, uh, if people have more access because uh, of the di digital access, this doesn't mean that is less quality. So we need to continue uh, pursuing the quality, the quality of education, the quality of research, the other uh, lesson that I have to say is that our universities can produce and organize many answers to the society. We are seeing that now. And the science and the universities need to continue cooperation. Uh, this means that even in our country, inside our country, and internationally, in Latin America, our universities need to continue and to improve cooperation because this will uh, lead us to uh, have more answers. And this is about uh, education and science. And in the medium term, I would say that I believe that uh, uh, we will uh, do uh, a lot in a very short period of time. Uh, this is uh, unbelievable what we are doing right now because of this emergency and I think that we will continue that and our universities will continue to do their work. Thank you so much. This was a great opportunity to uh, be here with you. Uh, thank you Chancellor May. Thank you as well. Uh, unfortunately, we have come to the conclusion of our panel today, and I'm really grateful to Rector Sanchez, President Garza, and Rector Smiley for sharing their perspectives on the immediate and long-term impact of COVID-19 and the role of internationalization for universities uh, in the Latin American region. These are really uh, critical insights uh, as we move forward. This also brings us to the conclusion of the Future of International Education virtual series. Countries will face difficult months ahead in mitigating COVID-19 and recovering from the economic, social, and political consequences for our societies. Although our regions and countries have their own context, we have learned that many of the challenges are common. Universities are facing immense financial strain and complex issues around student access. They also face difficult choices about institutional operations and health considerations for our entire university communities. We have so much to learn from sharing our experiences and our ideas. So this series has highlighted that universities will continue to play a critical role in emerging from this pandemic through international collaboration and innovation to address the common needs of humanity. Even though this moment of worldwide crisis is upon us, we've heard many examples of creative new ways to support global knowledge sharing while responding to specific local, national, and regional realities and needs. Now is not the time to close ourselves off from the world, but the time to open ourselves up. This is apparent now more than ever. I thank you to our panelists again for bringing to light the efforts at your own institutions to respond to COVID-19 and also for laying the groundwork for partnerships that will build a better future in the years after this pandemic. We look forward to continuing this conversation and our work together. And once again, I'd like to thank IIE President Alan Goodman for moderating these panels with me as well as our teams at UC Davis, Global Affairs and Diversity, Equity and Inclusion for arranging this opportunity. Thank you to the audience for joining us for this event and previous events in the series and for contributing your questions. The recordings for the full program of events uh, will be available on the UC Davis Global Affairs website. Thank you all and take care. Thank you. Thank you, Chancellor, and thank you, President.